I tell you, Loftus Fairfield, one thing that, uh, that, that stood out for me was the decision-making of Johan Gerson. Uh, first, I want to put it right. He is a brilliant player. We all want him in this country to be back to his old form, but at the moment he's not playing with the confidence that I want. He's going for a 50-20. It's at the crucial stage of the game. He hits it directly out. Now, from the, the confidence goes there. I don't know if it's his knee. You can see shaking his head the whole time. He's not in a happy place afterwards. There, what I don't enjoy is that if I work with tens, he's got to square out. He's not squaring out. He's telling all the defenders what he's doing. He's, he's selling those three forwards out completely. He's not putting them. He's Passes to them, make your own, it's own, make your own arrangements pass as far as I'm concerned. Now, th what will happen with him as well, I, I just want to go through this one quickly. There's the clash, clash of the head. There's a difference here. He, was a, he wasn't the primary tackler. There was a guy involved mm -hmm. first. Down in Cape Town, there was a primary tackler. So yeah. that is just a atlas. But talking about Khoosan, what concerns me, there's another clip I want to show you quickly if you have a look at uh, on, the, on the screen there, what, what I really want to talk about is when he goes for his kicking strategy, and he turns as well, and he doesn't give it to a left-footed kicker on the left-hand side of the field. He gives it to the right-footer. Mm. And they charge him down, and that brings the confidence down. All in all, he's a great player, but he hasn't got confidence. Now, for me, is that the right place at the top level you are see to get the confidence? That's Jeez. the question, because Chris Smith, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, is playing... I want to have a look at this quickly. This is a very good clip for young coaches to have a look at. If you see it, look at this kick off receive of the Bulls. Twice, Connor caught them with short kicks, with a guy, single guy standing there, and you'll see what happens now. There's the one I spoke earlier about. Yeah. He's on his he's on his heels. On his heels, they rushing, they putting the pressure on. Now he's passing to a right-footed kicker in that place of the field and he wants him to kick. It's a recipe for disaster. Good offenders charge down, always look. Is he a right or a left-footed kicker? So for me, it's taking the pressure back and back and back. But to come back, we just jumped the gun there. To come back to that kickoff receive, for me, that was a very interesting ploy. Very interesting what happens Yeah, They caught him earlier with a single guy in front and the two jumpers behind. Now, Walt Steenkamp and Russell Winton decide at halftime, let's show them something and give them a different picture. As he kicked, they swapped positions and suddenly Walt Steenkamp is in front, and he's got his lifter with him. Brilliant thinking. So they really f fell for the trap there. What a great kickoff receive. Now this is my concern. Nick Owen, what happens now is a real concern. When that ball is passed out there from, from that guy who turned his back, uh, Norkia, now three defenders are really trapping Huesen behind the guy. Now what does he do? He turns his back, and he feeds it to Aronsa, to his right foot, to relieve the pressure, and this, the result is disastrous. So for me, that's a primary school error. You can't have two guys turning your back, showing the defenders what you're going to do, and that's the result. If that was a big game against maybe a strong opposition, it could have been very, very costly. Yeah, yeah, the, exactly, exactly. You, what normally would happen in that position, it's a great kickoff. You know, you've taken it. If you haven't got a left-footed kicker, why are you moving it from right to left to a right-footed kicker? You're on a right-footed scrum off there, so why aren't you putting a box kick there? Or else play. Or else play. He must play. Uh, Horsen should play the forwards up after him, you know, with two cleaners, middle of the field, split your fullback and your fly half and kick uh, when there's space at the back. But to actually pass it to a right-footed kicker so far behind the advantage line, where Horsen takes, he takes the, 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 the pass behind the back of the forwards, so I'm playing downfield. He takes it like that. He then turns his shoulders almost to the touchline <laughs> and passes and runs towards his own try line. Now, you're not fixing anyone if you, if you do that. That's what I think Swayze is talking about confidence. You've got to fix a defender. And if I'm his coach, I'd say, <laughs> where are you going? You ran to the try line. Where are you going? You're running to your own try line after you've passed the ball. Surely you want to go towards your, you know, the opposition try line and stop a defender. Now, he does it quite often. He, does it, he often does it... When he, when, he, when he passes just prior to contact. So a lot of his passes, not a lot, but I've seen two or three called forward passes because he doesn't take it to the defender and mm. keep running. Mm. He takes it to the defender and then runs away from the defender. You've got to stop that defender on his inside shoulder and stop him from shifting. So it's just something he needs to learn. I like that there's a name for that pass. It's a make your own arrangements pass. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you, it's you look after that ball. I don't want it. <laughs>